What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video today. I wanted to take time and do a language related video. I've been releasing my Appalachia content and I hope you guys are enjoying it, but I wanted to also still do my language stuff. I've been using Mandarin Blueprint. As you guys know, I've been very vocal about it. I really love the product, but I wanted to actually show you guys a little bit inside. Now I'm not going to show a whole lot as far as different things because this is a paid course. However, I wanted to show a little bit more inside to show how it works a little bit better versus somebody just talking about it um, because I don't even think on the Mandarin Blueprint YouTube page that they really show much inside the course. So when you log in, there are multiple sections here. We've got pronunciation mastery. I did not do the pronunciation mastery course. I highly recommend you do. I know this is going to sound really stupid. I personally, I had experience with Mandarin prior to joining this course. Now it wasn't great, but I had a lot of exposure to it. And so I didn't do it. I just jumped right into phase one. But also as the course evolves and you get into it, you kind of pick the pronunciation up. Um, I think it's important to go through and see how sounds, you know, how different sounds can sound when they're combined with different pairs of things and things like that. But um, I definitely recommend it, especially if you're a beginner to Mandarin to go through that. It's just, I, I didn't because I had experience with it. I jumped right into phase one and there's a bunch of phases here. Phase one, phase two, and phase three. These are all for mainly building vocabulary to teach you the components and the radicals. That way you have everything you need to start building all these complex characters. I'm almost through phase three. Again, remember I had to take almost two months off because of breaking my elbow. I couldn't write. And you can absolutely do this course without writing. You 100% can. I just personally find a nice, just a nice rhythm of writing and getting the character from the paper on my hand, traveling up my muscle memory into my brain. It helps me remember the character. And I've spent, I've spent quite a bit of time writing. I love writing um, and it helps me remember the characters. It really, really does. I find that writing them has helped me be able to read them a lot more. It's almost like there's science involved in that, but that's a whole different story. Once you get past phase three, now I've got not gotten into this, but from what I understand, all the vocabulary and things that you've learned, they start compiling into graded readers. Same thing with phase five, they're building on that. And then you hit intermediate. And then there's two, uh, three intermediate courses, uh, or two intermediate courses, and then an advanced course. And once you finish, you're supposed to be able to pass an HSK-9 test and comprehend almost any native Chinese content you come across, as stated here in the lesson. I assume this is probably also going on the idea that you are immersing in content as well, so you're gaining the sounds of the language and stuff like that just internally as you're going throughout the course. So to get into it real quick, I'm not, I'm, tr I'm going to try to explain this really, really quickly. Basically, the way that they teach is called the, uh, it's called the Hanza movie method. And what that does is it teaches you how to look at a character, break it down into its components and the sounds. And by seeing a character, I can tell you the starting sound, the ending sound, the tone, and what it means all from this mnemonic system that you create. It sounds like a lot, but it gets really, really fast. And your mnemonic happens in a split second. When I see the character for Gan, which means dry, I know instantly what it is um, because all the stuff that happens in the mnemonic that I created in my head happens in a split second. There are characters that I've actually forgotten the mnemonic that I've created. I just know the character. I've just internalized it. And to me, that's part of the beauty of the system. So now if I thought about it for long enough, I'd remember the mnemonic, but like, that's what you want to do. Get the mnemonic to get it to start to stick. The very start, they start you simple. You learn the characters for ER Sun, which is going to be one, two, and three. Each of those are represented by a prop. So this one right here, just the E, is gonna be represented by, you can create whatever you want. Uh, they recommend like a razor blade. I used a razor blade because it just, especially getting into it, I just used what they had and it made sense to me. And then you build on that. So the first character that you actually learn is gonna be sure, which is Tim. And so basically, the way that this is set up, the ending sound is a scene and the beginning sound is an actor. And that's how you combine all of these things. Now there's a lot of beginning sounds, but they have a way to space it out. That's a little, sounds a little more complicated than it is. And I don't want to like really necessarily overwhelm you, but so you choose this actor, SH, they have Sean Connery. You have your props, you've got your line and you've got your, uh, this. So my props are for the line straight up is just a stick, the line across is gonna be a razor blade. And then you have your actor, which in their case is Sean Connery. This has a null sound at the end because it's just sure. There's not like an ending sound. That's all part of the thing. And so from there, boom, you create your set. Sean Connery, it's a second tone. So he's just inside the front door of your house. Um, as to where if it was a first tone, he'd be outside. That's why this location is important because it teaches you the tone. And then you just create a story, right? So how do you get your G actor in your set in that 
and how do you create tin with a stick? I mean, it could be something simple. Sean Connery is wanting to build a fire because it's cold outside. I say that because it's 38 degrees here where I live. And so he takes a stick and he takes his razor blade and he cuts it into tin pieces. There you go. Then they start building on that. So it builds. So then you pick a prop for that. So that way, if this is a component of a character, you now have a prop. I think most people use cross or like a syringe or something like that. There's two or three different things that they recommend. And from there, you take the syringe or the cross and you put the razor blade on top. And so how do you take the cross and the razor blade and your G actor and your AN set outside the front door? And how do you get dry? I'll give you an example mine is my friend Gabe, AN is my aunt's house. My props are a razor blade and then the cross uh, for the for sure. And so I take those and actually I even kind of have it to where it's like a visual representation too. It's really hot outside. Gabe is at my aunt's house um, because of the AN aunt. And so he looks over and he sees a cross. Uh, and it's sitting on her porch and he's like, oh my gosh, that cross is starting to, like the top of it's starting to rot a little bit. So he picks it up and he grabs his razor blade and he cuts the top off, which is literally the pictograph of what the character Gan is. And when he cuts it, just a ton of like dry rotted wood or sand starts falling out of the cross because the cross has dry rotted because it's so hot and dry outside. So there we go, dry. I mean, it is, it is what it is. And that's what it is. Sounds really stupid, but it works. So from there, basically you continue on. Now, every lesson has a video until you get a little bit further down the course. Um, I know all of phase one, phase two may as well. I, I don't remember, but phase three gets to where there's not videos for every course. Like even this, this is a three minute video on what's going on and how to properly film something for E, right? Pick a prop. Um, there's tons of talking. They explain in depth what's going on. Um, but once they kind of get you set up with what you need to survive, so to speak, once you get further down, those videos may or may not be there, right? So we can just go into here. So we got Tian, for example. Does Tian have a video? No, yeah, so it's just a video. And it's just, yeah, pick a prop. So there's not a video. And that way you can kind of work a little bit faster and at your own pace and kind of, you know, carry on there. Now, I've not actually looked into phase four. We'll look into that. And then I'm going to show you the flashcards. So phase four, you get into here. Yeah, okay, so... All right, well, I would have to watch the intro. Uh, shadowing, so they start shadowing, which is good. I'm anxious to see. Let me get down here towards the end. Okay, yeah, so stuff in context. Um, I don't know where the short stories or any of that stuff starts, but I mean, there's tons of sentences to go through. Here we go, conversation uh, and stories. Here we go, yeah. So it looks like there are some stories using some different stuff, and that's really, really cool. I'm anxious to get into that. And I'm gonna do updates as I carry on through this. Now, the flashcard system I actually really like. Um, I think everybody kind of get, you can see how much I've missed here on the side from where I just, I couldn't write. I could go through, like I said, and try to do stuff, but I, I wanted to do this right. I wanted to write the characters to make that muscle memory from pencil, uh, from paper to, to my brain, which helps a ton. But anyway, so you have your flashcards, right? So you click in here. So the flashcard actually has as much information or as little information as you want on it. You can print, you, you can type your whole story out if you want to. Um, if not, you also don't have to. I mean, do whatever you're comfortable with but the flashcards are here the space repetition system seems really really good um i actually really love it it works it seems very similar to anki it's just not anki but all of these have audio and it sounds like native audio to me it doesn't sound like text to speech so that is good so everything is very well done in that regards and they have flashcards for everything there's flashcards for all the dialogue and then there's also they have a flashcard with audio multiple audio two people saying it for every sentence as well. So if you want audio and you want native audio and not Duolingo audio, native audio, this thing is is it for you. And there's no, the other cool thing about Traverse versus using Anki, there's no ups and downs of like trying to download an Anki deck or oh my gosh, is it gonna work? And who knows if you update it, the deck might start having problems because I've seen that in the past before. This is all just there. It's all internally, it's all there. It's on a, it's on a service that they use. It's not their service, but they just really like the service. It's all there, the flashcards are there. And plus two, they can update it. So it's not like you have to worry about downloading a new deck if they upload stuff, all of it is uploaded and it's updated very regularly. And so I think that that is very, very huge for what they are trying to do. So I just finished level 18, which means that I am 224 characters into that. And if you take into account that I can read and write 224 characters, but not to mention the amount of words from those characters that I can learn. Like for example, character 224 from that character, I learned two additional words. So it's much more than 224 in regards to 
how much characters I know and how many words that I know and stuff like that because it's always combining, it's always building on each other. And the words that you learn are always from past characters, so it's not introducing new material. It's just saying, hey, you learn this word. Well, guess what? Now, if you pair that with this other thing, boom, there's a word. And so it helps concrete that into your head. And it also helps kind of refresh that character. You're constantly using them because you're constantly building on that instead of adding a new character. Like for example, if I would have learned she and then they were like, oh, here's another character that you've never seen before, that's a word. Well, that doesn't mean anything to me because I've not learned that character. This takes characters that I've learned, puts them together, and it just, it makes everything so much easier to remember. So after using Mandarin Blueprint for over a couple of months, what I recommend it, I absolutely would. Um, it can be a little costly. I'm actually having issues with that myself currently. It is very costly. However, once you see the amount of effort put in to the course and everything, it's really, really good. It's very thought out. And to be honest, this is one of the first times since learning Chinese, and I know that I, I know a bit, but like, it's the first time that I've, since I've started learning Chinese where I actually feel like I can learn Chinese and my pronunciation is getting better because I constantly, when I hear the flashcard, I'm, re I'm shadowing the, the, the native speaker on the tone. I'll do it a couple of times. And I also obviously test myself on the tone while I'm writing the characters. And, and it's just challenging me in all the aspects of it from writing to recognizing the character because the flashcard will add two different characters. It'll add the character in Chinese and Hanzu, and then it'll also add the English and you have to write the character from memory which is incredible to me. And being able to write these characters from memory solidifies, it's practicing the recall of the character, which is how you can be able to start to speak and stuff like that. I love the system. I, I think it's great. I do wish that it could be a little bit cheaper, but with that being said, this is, I mean, to be fair, I genuinely, and I truly fit, and this is not a sponsored video. I wish they would sponsor me. I wish Mandarin Blueprint would be like, dude, thank you so much for producing this. We're just gonna give you this course for free or we're gonna give you a discount. <laughs> but uh, but no, but this is an incredible course. Um, I hate spending money and I hate spending money on language learning resources because a lot of them are just the same plug and play crap. I do not mind this, even though it can be a bit of a struggle sometimes because if you're serious about learning, this 100% teaches you. I, I, I have seen it. I 100% think that this is the best. It's the best. I love this program because it covers all elements of learning. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any more questions, let me know down below. This was a ton of information and I hope I did not overwhelm you. However, I feel like I probably did. But thank you guys for watching. Um, if you wanna see anything else about Mandarin Blueprint, let me know. I will answer comments in the comment section below and I will try to help as much as I can because I do think that this is a valuable resource. I think it's one of the best and I would like for you guys to try to experience that because it is so good. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you all in the next video.